Sorry for playing cameraman, but here we are. Welcome to uh, the 19th um, live session here at Genesis Models. Um, sorry for my tie, but I've literally just come from the garage. Um, this week has been um, a bit tricky because my mate Haig, he has been off work with a hernia and had to go in for an operation and all this kind of stuff. So I've been helping out at a garage. Um, so I've literally just come from there into here um, to do our live session for our MiG-15. So I haven't actually prepared anything, so I'm kind of winging it tonight. So bear with me. But if you remember in our last live session, we was putting on... Um, there were natural metal finish and we were going on about putting black spray paint down, um, how natural metal finishes, they show up every sort of imperfection. So you do need to be on, on the ball with all your sanding and scribing and, and all that kind of stuff. And I think we went into stuff like um, single action airbrushes and all that cool stuff. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to be doing a few sort of fancy things I was thinking of because we've got a bit of masking to do um, as well as I want to show you um, I, I was thinking about doing some sort of weathering bits to sort of change the colours of different panels um, and different ways of going about it and, and if you remember um, we wanted to keep this as um, the metal colours by Vallejo, we wanted to keep it acrylic based um, because a lot of good natural metal finish paints are you know lacquers, enamels, that kind of stuff. But we wanted to be a bit more um, sort of breathable friendly, shall we say, by going down the acrylic route, right? Then, so let's just bring you to the model itself and to the workstation. Maybe change the angle just a smidge. There we go. As always, um, get commenting, um, and we can, and I can sort of answer any sort of questions, answers you want answering, um, any problems you're having. We can sort of go over them together, and I can try and um, you know do this live and, and let you guys hopefully help you guys out with some questions. Now, now looking at this one, it's pretty sort of simple. It is all nice natural metal finish all over. Um, but then we've got this red nose, um, and this gets a little bit tricky because what we've got is we've got uh, <coughs> where we got the number 25, we have um, sort of like it goes natural metal finishy again. So we can't just go off and just mask up this and then go, oh, there we go, spray it red. We've got a, this shape to do, but to do that first off, let's just put this out of the way. The best way to do it, and I did have them sort of there, we are, there they are, get out the decals. You know, the decals, if you look at the picture, that blue 25 um, is basically the, the size we need. So let's cut that out. All right, so I'm just going to cut out a little 25. Now, I want to cut this out sort of uh, as, as nice and neatly as possible to... The actual shape we're hoping to, to look for, right? So we can sort of use it as a guide or as a template, all right? I'm not going to use it as a full-on template, but I'm going to use it as a general sort of guide to guide us, all right? Or I'd be cutting this out a bit more precise. Right, so we know that we've got to make something that is at least um, not smaller than that, and just you know get it to fit in there as nicely and as perfectly as possible. But what we can do is we can actually sort of mass this around all the way around to start off with. Uh, just quickly check in the chat. Um, got one from Keith here. He's quite it sounds like he's quite impressed with the natural metal finish. Um, it is quite impressive actually for acrylic base paints. I mean, I'm looking at this with a mark on one eyeball, and it does actually look good. I mean, it's not necessarily just the light, or oh, then again, maybe it is the light. I'm just looking at the camera, that does look a bit chroma on camera, yeah. 
Um, so it does it does look a bit sort of chromey on camera from what I can see, uh, but in the real light it's probably not so shiny as that's looking on camera. But it is it is still quite impressive for um, <coughs> um, uh, for acrylic based paints. So what we want is just going to get out. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a a croaky throat. I think something's going round. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'm just trying to oh, trying to find the end. There it is. Right, this here is Jammy Dog Tape. Um, it's something I get off eBay. It's 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 actually really good to have because it is really good for doing um, going round corners and curves and everything. Because it's like really nice and thin. It's like one mil thick. It allows you to go around so i'm getting off a nice little bit there then i'm going to cut it all right and then the next thing we need to do is <coughs> excuse me get out our instructions so we can find out where this is starting <coughs> sorry it's i've really got a croaky throat tonight um right then so looking at this it looks like We've got a little recess panel line there where that's going to start. So I'm going to just get that and just lay it down like so where I need it to start. And then I'm just going to wrap this around. Now, we haven't got much of a guide on the side. So I want to find <coughs> excuse me, where it's going on the underside. So I'm looking at the power lines that we've got on here and using that as a guide to find out where it's wrapping around and going. And it looks like, although that doesn't make much sense if it does, oh yeah, okay. It seems to be here, right where the actual landing gear doors are. So if I can just, ooh, that's come off. So the good way is to go from point to point, not go round and round and round and sort of just touch, 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 because you don't really get much of a straight line. But if you know where you're starting, hold that with a finger or a thumb, and you just kind of pull it from one end, <coughs> excuse me, and take it to the point where you want it to be. <coughs> oh, really sorry, I've got a croaky voice. Um, so I'm looking at this now, that is looking fairly straight and we basically want to do the same this side and we follow and it's not going that well, I want it to this side, but there we go, we'll pull that back, again pinch it, pull it, it's fairly tight-ish, let's just pull this one out of the way and we just wrap that around to the point where we want it. So if you're off camera. <coughs> and there we go, we've got our main sort of guide there. And then we can just look at it and just see is that looking, <coughs> excuse me, is that looking sort of even? Because, you know, that red's gonna sort of come to the foreground a bit and it's probably gonna show we from sort of off. So it's looking pretty good, I think. We should be good with that. Then what we need is our little decal here. And then this is where, uh, looking at the instructions again, right? look for any sort of panel lines or anything like that is, that you can use as like a bit of a guide. I'm kind of seeing that it's coming up to this top panel line a little bit there. All right, so maybe what we could do now is get out a couple of our masking tapes just here. And maybe sort of see, you know, maybe we could get away, hopefully, with one being a size we need. Which actually it doesn't look like we've got one <coughs> that would want to be our size. So we may have to do some cutting or something. There's the other little one. 
Maybe we could put two of them together. Well, then again, maybe we could use this as a guide. So let's uh, get out <coughs> a T square. Here we go. Nice little T square, always a good one. Just to see if I've cut that square at least, which it's looking pretty square. So if you do do this, it's it is good to sort of cut it nice and neat because it does look like that would go in there rather nicely. So we'll use this as our little template. All right. So I think what we'll do, we'll get some uh, Tamiya masking tape. This is the 10 mil stuff, and we'll sort of make this a little go around a little bit more. I'm just putting it on the back of my hand so it's not mega tacky because we don't want to rip up any paint I'm just going to wrap this around and we've got this bit of a gun here so we want to sort of dig that in <coughs> like so and try and get it around <coughs> there we go pull that and then the next next it's sort of it's up to you depending you personally how confident you are with an airbrush depends how much more you sort of mask up oh my gun things coming up okay i've got when my gun breaks off like that it's not completely gone so let's just get a bit of glue on it get in there push it back up hopefully it won't come off because it is still slightly glued on. Just hold that there for a sec, make sure it's straight. There we go. Try not to knock that now. Well, right, as I say, it depends how confident you are with your spraying. I mean, I might just wrap it round another. Right. If you're not so confident, then you might get overspray, and we don't want to have any overspray. <coughs> there we go. Right. Put our T square away, put our masking tape away. Uh, now, coming across the paint, spray this red actually. Actually, first off, where is here is our <coughs> bit of decal. Now, we want to keep our decal still quite. Um, you know, we want to be able to still use it, All right? I'm just giving it a little bit of a bend to go with the curvature, All right? <clears throat> As I say, we still want to use it, so we want to try and get this to go go down. Mm. It's going to be a bit tricky, I think. See, I should have prepared tonight a little bit better. Here we go. Hopefully that will work just there. We're gonna to have to kind of play with this and curve it. Because right, we can't exactly stick it there. It's gonna be sort of like a floating template, so to speak. All right, so we're just gonna make sure it is curving with the model. Okay, okay. Right, now I just want to mark this name with a pen. <coughs> nice little red mark just to kind of mark where on the opposite side where the numbers end so we know how far we need to take that in there so a bit of masking tape <coughs> hopefully this is going to work mask that to that marker there and hopefully if we're careful this will be all right 
was going to quickly check my instructions. Yeah. Around about there. I want to make sure it's going on level as well. Yeah, that's going to maybe give us some overspray to be fair. Yeah, this could be a bit of a problem. Maybe I'll just have to hold it down while I'm spraying around that area. Right, now priming this, we could go about it in a couple of different ways. I mean, we could just leave it as it is, you know, it's sort of already been primed and everything. We could spray the red on top. Um, another way you could do things is um, prime it with a yellow. Uh, a yellow is, is, is quite good for priming when spraying something red but i think going because we're live having to faff around with this bit of a template here and stuff it's gonna be a little bit tricky i mean you could spend i mean so i'm trying to find a quicker way of doing it because i mean really you could go off get some masking tape and you could cut one along that length one along that length one along that length um, you do the same the other side and it is quite you know time consuming and a little bit fiddly and i'm just trying to use the decal as like a guide so we've got to get it to stay down as we spray it and then we switch to the other side so let's just give that a try anyway um just now gonna get out i do like the um, Vallejo Italian Red, which is 085. This is a really nice colour for, for doing some nice, just solid red. All right, so I'm just going to give that a shake and maybe check some questions or anything. Okay, I've got a nice little um, tip here. Um, well, first off, we've got a question from Rich about the Water Neo um, as a occasional use for beginners. Um, to be honest with you, if I had the choice, I'd go for the Vida. Um, I've done a, a video about it. Where's it going? Uh, it's an inbox review of the Vida. It's a nice airbrush. It only costs 20 quid. Um, I mean, it's probably, yeah, I mean, I've had this years and it still works rather nice. It's, it's nice, cheap. Um, okay, it's not as good as all your more expensive ones. The Neo, apparently, I, I, I think it's, you know, just as good to be fair, but you pay, I think the Neo is around about 50 pounds ish um so yeah you know don't you don't always have to go with name name brands um and then we've had another suggestion here at the bottom sorry i can't pronounce your name um but as i say i should have prepped a little bit better and what he suggested was why not cut around the decor which makes quite a good point so let's just get out <coughs> Uh, let's get out a nice big what is this one the 18 mil what can we stick this down on just lightly stick it down on the table right and then we can just you know, hold that down a bit and then we are you are you not even on camera sorry let's just move <coughs> this stuff about a little bit yeah so here we go getting out some 18 mil lightly pulling it down and then we place this on here we hold it in position get our blade and as nice as close as we can All right we're just gonna cut with the blade using Decla as a template so we know we've got a a fairly good size using the Decla as a template and there we 
Okay, we should hopefully be able to just peel this piece up carefully. Does it? Now we get a bit of tweezers. Then we can bring in our model and let's just apply <coughs> the mark we made to this by using the decal again. Yeesh. Okay, apply our little mark. <coughs> Excuse me. I just want to double check this mark actually. Yep, should be okay. And then using any sort of recessed panel lines, which for this one it looks like you've got some recessed panel lines, and then just at underneath that, that recessed panel line, just at the top here, there's some recessed rivets. I'm going to use that just below that and then i need to just make sure this goes down nice and straight just want to double check that now do you know what that could come in a little bit better than that let's try let's Let's mark where the actual, let's mark on here. I don't want it to go too far across, you see, because then it's not going to look quite right. All right, so let's reapply this mark. Which is about here. Right, so that's where <coughs> we want this to start getting out the old tweezers again. Let's just slowly peel this up. And about there should do it. And again, let's just make sure we're going fairly straight. There we go. Right, that should look rather rather good and we can spray that up now uh, i know it's a bit sort of fiddly um but it's going to look good in the end so we need to do that on the opposite side uh someone's asking am i using alclad's paints um no with this one if you remember we decided that we wanted to do sort of a more sort of friendly um natural metal finish so we are using the metal color range which is acrylic based rather than going down the route of of doing all that um sort of unhealthy shall we say um acrylics and whatnot and enamels you know just in case you haven't you know spent loads of money on extractor fans and all that stuff so i'm just cutting out the second one and I think this time I'll mark it while it's still stuck down just to make things a little bit easier <coughs> okay so let's apply our little mark so we know where this needs to go there we go nice little red mark and then let's get this pulled up. Right. So now I've got both sides done. I think I'll um, prime this yellow just to show you what I mean. It just I find you get a much more sort of nicer, more vibrant red when you prime it yellow. Right, because I know a lot of the time we sort of prime everything grey. Helps the um, helps the red go down as well because I mean you got you know there's a couple of colours out there where they don't go down very well, so it's always good to prime and like like yellow actually I mean it's really a good idea to prime it white or something 
especially from spraying yellow onto black. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. Let's just right then. Looking looking level with the mark one eyeball, but let's sort of you know maybe try and sort of see, you know, does it look right? Um it, re it really does pay to just take your time and just make sure. Look at it from all the different angles. Is it looking, you know, nice and uniform and straight? Do they look the same both sides? Are they matching up? And maybe even close one eye and just check. Okay, I think I think we're looking good. I think as you can see it's looking sort of matched up if it's not you know just make a maneuver it move it i've got a i've got a slight thing it's just 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 the slightest of just giving it a slight little angle up that way maybe or is it but then you've got this thing where if you kind of play with it too much you end up creating more it just gets worse and worse okay okay should we just accept that that looks, that looks good <coughs> yep looks all right i'll check any questions i'll get some yellow paint out as well Uh, oh, oh, Rich was on about the um, Neo compressor. Uh, when it comes to compressors, really, my biggest buying guide is just plain and simply, just make sure it's got a tank. Um, that is plain and simply it. You can't really go wrong. Uh, you can't really go wrong with any compressor, really, as long as it's got a tank. Um, what you've got to think is the tank holds the air, which means the compressor's on less, and which means the compressor doesn't heat up as much. If the compressor's not heating up as much, it's going to last longer. Um, so I'm not sure if the Neo's got a tank with it, but if it has, it should be absolutely fine. Right, so what I'm doing, I'm just shaking up some 002, which is a medium yellow. Um, sort of any yellow will do. I mean, you can sort of have like a nice opera sort of yellow and uh, change things up a little bit there. Make your yellow a little bit darker. It's a nice quick sort of prime. So I'm just getting this. Um, I'm just going to blast this straight into the coke and i've just changed my air pressure to around about the 20 psi and let's get this deck out the way so don't want to mess that up because we need that let's just move some stuff out the way let's get a kitchen paper towel down and then we can spray this up Right, so I'm just going to pour this straight in. It's only a little bit we're doing. I'd normally sort of, you know, add some thinners to this. But if I'm not spraying a whole model, I'm just spraying this little bit on here. I don't mind doing that. So now I'm just putting on a just a light misty coat. Right, this is... It's always good to just go light and misty just to start with. It just... Give something for our paint. And my gun's broke off again. Do you know what? I'm just going to pop this off because it's just going to keep breaking. Put it somewhere safe next to my decal. And I'll glue that on after. Probably after I turn the camera off and just before I leave so it has all night to dry. 
coat. Nice light misty coat to start with. Uh, do you know what? It hasn't got a forward on picture of this, so I'm not sure if we should be spraying down in there, actually. Which isn't good, considering I'm alive. Uh, maybe there's a picture on the box. Okay, I'm live. I can't really search around for references, so I'm just going to not spray down there, because it is the air intake. I would assume it wouldn't be. So I'm just cutting to air, just to dry off this nice light Mr. Coat. And then I'm going to sort of put on a normal coat. All right, now, because it was silver underneath, silver's a bit whitish, a nice light colour. So our yellow is getting some good coverage. So it looks like we're going to get away with just just doing that. There we go, one, one misty coat, one white coat, and I think we're all good. Should be good enough. Right, and because uh, I'm doing this at an angle where I'm not spraying into there, we are still, as you can see, nice and silver inside there. As long as you get the angle right, you won't be, like, spraying in there. All right, and you should get, you know, a fairly nice, sharp sort of line on that nose there. Well, I'm happy with how that's primed up. So we need to do a quick colour change for our red. I'm just going <clears> to, <throat> just in our little airbrush holder here, I'm just going to blast it through. Just stops all the, the um, spray from spraying it up in the air and stuff. Just catches it in, in there. It's a good, good little product, that is. Right, and I'm using my home-brewed airbrush cleaner. Uh, there is a video on how to make it if you want to make it. If you don't want to make it, uh, when it comes to airbrush cleaners, I, I recommend the Lapos. I always used to use that before I, I made my own. So I'm just pinching the end, pushing down the trigger to get air, gurgling it up. All those bubbles are nicely clean it for you. Tip it upside down with the cotton, um, with the kitchen paper towel in there. And we'll just clean that out. Get all the, any bits coming at this end. Probably give it another blast of airbrush cleaner. Gurgle that up again. There we go. Tip it upside down again. And there we go. Just checking any <clears throat> questions, maybe. Um, um, another, I mean, it's the same question, but it doesn't matter. I mean, if you've, you've only just come in, um, we are using the metal color range by Vallejo uh, because it's acrylic based because we want to keep things a little bit more healthy shall we say for the lungs for this particular one there we go so now we've done that twice can just sort of blast it through until we start seeing it clean which it isn't clean yet so I'll just keep blasting some through I'll just use some of my normal thinners because my, my homebrew is kind of like got a slight yellow tinge to it anyway. There we go. That's looking clean now. So we can get out the red, and again, I'm just gonna <clears throat> I'm just gonna go straight in and not dilute it. I do I do recommend you dilute Vallejo paints if you're doing something big, but just quick little things like this. I don't mind a quick, simple spray of it. But it will start to clog up the end of your nozzle after a certain point. So, light misty coat. 
And hopefully you can already see, like, being a, a yellow primer, it gives it a bit of a nice fiery sort of look to it. Uh, there is our light misty coat, just to always nice light misty coat. It sort of gets that bit of paint down first, cuts to air, it dries really quickly, and it just allows all your co coats to stick that little bit better for it. And it just dries quickly, so we can come in there with a a normal light coat, and that's giving us our red pretty quickly. Nice coverage going down. Just cutting to air now. Probably one more coat, we'll probably finish that off, but I, I, I hope you like that yellow sort of kind of gives our red some, you know, gives it a little bit more. I'll put out the second coat now. Remember those angles just here so we don't sort of spray into, um, which I've got a little bit of overspray, but I'll show you how we sort that out in a bit. Have a good look, make sure you're happy with it. Okay, that's looking good. Right, there you go, I'm happy <coughs> with that. Right then, uh, just getting out a quick cop, uh, kitchen, no, a cotton wool bud. As I say, I got a little bit of overspray just in there. I mean, this is like does dry really quickly it is acrylics but if you can get it before it cures and cure being dry and curing is like kind of two different things right i mean this here is dry enough that i can touch it i've already scratched it as i say it's dry enough that i can touch it but curing, curing is when the paint has like been left overnight, it's dried, um, it's dried down to the bone, right? So while this is just dry, um, you can quite easily kind of wipe it off. Okay, that's a bit of a tricky area to get to, so I'll use a cocktail stick instead. I'm just going to nibble the end to make it soft and a little bit moist. Right, we don't want it to be dry and really sharp and pointy. All right, because we'll just end up scratching our natural metal finish. I'm just rubbing at this now, nice and carefully, just to get rid of our uh, bit of overspray there. And on this side. Uh, I don't know if you could see that. Just removing that nice and carefully. Um, just as a note as well, I mean, we could so easily just come in here with um, a paintbrush, actually, because although this is made for the airbrush, um, I have been painting with it, and it does paint yeah, pretty sort of good, actually. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually painting there a little bit more. Let me try to come back in with a cotton wool bird. Tidy this up a little bit. Yeah, that's a bit better. Nice bit of a combo there. I might even um, later on sort of come in with a paintbrush and just tidy that little rim up there just a bit. 
Uh, I might even need the masking tape on as well for a bit, just to just to leave that just for a sec. <clears throat> so while that kind of nicely dries, what I want to show you as well, well actually let's get our our paint airbrush um, cleaned again. While I do that, I'll just check any questions. Okay, a uh, couple of questions. Uh, what thinner do I use? Um, the thinners I use for pretty much all my paints is a homebrew thinners. Uh, check out Genesis Models website. On there, under tutorials, I'll show you how to make your own homebrewed thinners. And I haven't looked back, to be fair. It just seems to work well with all the different brands. Right. Uh, uh, someone's on about humbrel paints. Uh, well, it depends. Do you mean the enamel based or the acrylics? And you're saying you're having problems with them clogging in your airbrush. Um, really, uh, I know some brands are a little bit more tricky, but when it comes to any sort of airbrush, paint clogging your, your airbrush you probably mean the needle end now a lot of that is potentially down to a few sort of things one is maybe your air pressure is too high the higher your air pressure is um and say you're getting in really sort of close your air pressure is high you're going to get blowback um which is going to sort of dry up your needle that the air pressure is going to dry up your needle end a lot quicker so the paint dries and and before you know it right your, your nozzles got clogged up right because you know your air pressure is too high so maybe you might need to bring your air pressure down um the other thing is is maybe you're not putting enough thinners in um your paint because i mean if you haven't got enough thinners in there, you might feel like you need to up the pressure more to be able to spray the paint out. Um, but what you probably just need to do is just add a bit more thinners. Make the paint thinner so it dries, doesn't um, dry as quickly on the end of the needle. The other thing is, is it could be, um, I know this is like a global thing, so you could be, say, in Florida, for example, really hot, really humid, so in that case what you want to do is i'll just get some out um doesn't really matter about the brand but some um, fluid retarder this stuff is it slows um paint drying time down so the the paint won't dry so quickly on the end of your nozzle and then clog it up um also the other thing is is just generally you know, during, um, doing colour changes, making sure that you're keeping your needle and, and nozzle clean once you've finished spraying, uh, just general cleanliness of the airbrush. Um, and that pretty much sort of like covers all, you know, most possibilities for having a, a cloggy airbrush. It's just, it's just cleaning, making sure your needle doesn't dry up um, and just to, to either add some retarder or a bit more thinners lower your air pressure those kind of things should sort you out quite nicely um, and pretty much you know even if it was like the uh, humble enamel paints you know it's the same kind of principle as well apart from you dealing with enamel based sort of thinners so you'd need an enamel based retarder um, if you're going down that that route uh, that's it for that now so let's just clean out my airbrush again the usual um just talking about clogging you know by doing a good color change you make yourself ready and clean for the next color so i'm just gurgling that up tipping it upside down tipping it upside down so if there's any dried bits in the color cup it's not going to be trying to get out your needle end 
right? Because a colour cup end is a lot bigger than your 0 0.4 mil needle. So let's just whack another blast of this in here. Right, and what we're going to do, we're going to get out some more natural metal finish colours. Right, I'm going to show you one where <coughs> we, because um, this is 170 second scale, right? What we want to do is sort of get some of the panels and get some of the panels looking, you know, like different tones of the enamel to sort of represent, I don't know, maybe, you know, a panel has been replaced. So maybe it's a different worn level of wornness of a panel metal panel so it's slightly a different color or something um you know and it's it's weathered differently to the rest of the the, the aircraft is what we're after so we're going to do that and I, I am i haven't got loads of colors of the mr color range right because normally i use enamels and lacquers but i did buy enough to sort of give us some different stuff so we've originally been using the aluminium um 701 i'm thinking the dull aluminium's a nice sort of close one for aluminium what what you want is whatever natural metal finish color you're using try to get something that's very close to it but slightly off normally is a good good match and sometimes i do like to use a bit of duolinium for something a little bit on the darker side so i'm just going to get out let's try our aluminium mat here well dull aluminium seven one seven uh, well you need to make sure you shake it and get everything off the bottom because that's where all the good stuff is i'm going to use a paintbrush at first just to show you a bit of painting and maybe mask maybe we can mask something up yeah let's mask something up okay let's try this wing tip just here so uh you probably i don't know well you can see let's maybe get you in a bit closer but the, you know there's a bit of a shape to it so let's cut let's get out a bit of this masking tape and what i want to do is i want to cut it across here and just give it a little bit of an angle so we can follow um, what we've got is just in the corner here it just steps up just that little bit I know it's only like a little bit but all these things come together for a nice professional finish so I just want to you know just get that in there and stuck down and there you go that's just in there are you on camera yeah and then i'll just pull that back to the other end following that all the way around then we can get away with a simple straight piece across here <clears throat> now i wouldn't normally do this because it's 170 second scale i'm going to get out the mask girl <coughs> excuse me so as you can see, there's that just tiny little step in there. I don't want that to actually go across there. Okay. And then why not? Let's just make sure it's just the wing tip pad panel line. So there's that little bit that goes across there as well. All right. But then also we do have like the navigation light just then i'm kind of thinking actually it might look cool if we sort of get that out as well but it's um it's not exactly a straight shape it's quite small all right so for something like this and because it's 170 second scale i don't mind getting a good old mass scale uh, you know we've already used this for for the actual canopy right, let's give it a, a good good shake <coughs> now just going to I need to I want to find not one of my nice series 7 paint brushes because you know if you ever do any paint brushing series 7 is definitely the best out there I want to get something um, a little bit sort of I don't mind ruining but then oh here we go an old series 7 um, 
that I don't use anymore. I kind of use it for like, well, actually probably something like this, something nice and fine, but I don't like, mind ruining it because, you know, it has been, I've been using this one for years and I've finally uh, stopped using it for my fine stuff. And I'm just going to paint this just on that panel there. I will need to leave this to dry. Well, that should, uh, you know, all these little details nicely builds up. Do you know what? That has dried so quickly. I've been painting it and it's just painted it off. Okay, so it needs to be a bit quicker than that. So let's just pull that gunk off. Now, I can't remember, was this, I think it's water-based, but I'll use some cellulose on it anyway to clean it off. and carefully just painted in that little panel and as you can see you've got to be quick before it starts drying and then you pull it off <coughs> so that should look good when we spray it let's put that down to dry all right now i want to be able to use this paintbrush again at some point so <coughs> cellulose finish pretty much kills anything and everything so let's just open this up and then we'll just quickly dip it in there kitchen paper towel here we go and it should clean this up all nice just dip it in again and get our paintbrush back to normal so we can at least use it again find a clean bit I have to dip it a couple of times and then there is there is a video on the Genesis models website under tutorials uh, which is um, using how to like clean your paint brushes and stuff you go out and use this product called the masters right but there we go it's an old paintbrush but it's sort of all good to go again we've got all that mask out off it all right because we don't mask all destroying every single paintbrush we use excuse me just having a drink uh, Uh, da, 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 da. Keith um, she yes copy decks is mascal without the dye um, if anyone wants to to try that out instead I've just just happened to have a pot of mascal uh, that's it for the questions and as you can see that does tend to dry pretty quick so let's get out the aluminium dull Give it a good shake. I mean, let's bring you out a little bit. Right, give it a good, good, good shake. Getting out the airbrush again. Maybe throw a bit more cleaner in there. Oh, a bit of red still come out. I do find that red tends to like not clean out your airbrush, strangely. That's brilliant, mate. Okay, so getting out. This colour, it's just going to be nice and quick. I mean, it's probably a good idea to go off and mask up all the areas that you want to be um, a slightly different tone of natural metal finish. But I'm just going to quickly just do this one just here. You know, start off with that light misty coat, then I'm just cutting to air, and then I'm going to some more All right now hopefully you know the color we've picked is is just slightly different of our aluminium just enough to sort of give us a nice look to it so let's just you know can remove the masking tape pretty sort of quickly All right and you should be able to see that we've got just that little little difference 
just there, which just gives us you know a, a bit more sort of flavour to our model. And then if I get out a cocktail stick, right, we can just carefully, carefully, just nibble around a little bit, carefully sort of maybe pull away this mascal, fingers crossed. Which then sort of shows that with a, the normal natural metal finish underneath. So, you know, it is quite nice. But as I say, you probably want to mask up all the different ones. Don't go too mad. Don't go so mad that every single panel line ends up being different colours. It's just the odd one here and there. Oh, I've got a little, little spot of red on there. So I'm just going to get out. I don't know if you could see that. There's a little spot of red cotton wool but a little bit moist and if we rub at it it should remove all right so don't worry too much about these things if you have because um, what you got to remember is I mean I sprayed this like last week the natural metal finish has nicely dried and cured whereas that little spot of red I've just done that tonight it's dried but it's not cured so it will rub away um before we end up rubbing away our natural metal finish so you know if we rub away at that we rub away the red first eventually we'll start rubbing away our natural metal finish but as you can see you know if you have ever a mistake like that just give it a light rub with a moist cotton wool bud the other thing is is just getting out a sort of a nicer paintbrush now uh, I'm just going to sort of show you, we can, we can, what shall we, we'll try some Duralinium, right, Duralinium uh, 702, right, give that a good, good shake, make sure we get all the sediment off of the bottom, which hopefully you can just see, you can sort of see it's still there, so just keep on shaking at it. Um, it wouldn't hurt to put some ball bearings in there. I mean, some, some paints, which I know are a bit of a pain. I do like to, um, what is it, AK Interactive. You know, you can buy steel shaking ball bearings off them, throw them in there, and they're all good. Uh, another question here um, uh, about masking tape leaving marks on the Vallejo metal paint. Um, yes and no, and pretty much all paints, it, it, it sort of all depends. Um, as you may have noticed, I did sort of um, show you here where I'd get some masking tape, I'd rip it off, and I would put it on the back of my hand. And that sort of makes this masking tape a little less tacky so as it doesn't stick so much to our model and could potentially like rip up little, little bits of, of, of the, um, the, the um, natural metal finish. So yeah, I mean, it can sort of make marks. Natural metal finishes are a bit sort of, you know temperamental you know as i say you've got to be on your ball with any sort of sanding of your seam lines because natural metal finish shows everything up um when you do any sort of masking you can sort of like peel away some of the pigments and stuff so i mean if you are having problems like that i mean i haven't glossed this yet but what you could do is you could do your natural metal finish then you could come in with, you know, say good old pledge, um, pledge wax floor cleaner um, stuff, which you know is a nice gloss. I know Alclads do a a nice. Here we go. Alclads two lacquers aqua gloss. That's good to sort of put on on top. So you know you could gloss it first if you've if you've you know maybe not so confident and then you can mask up and do all these little bits um if you want to sort of get around that but back to uh what we was going to do i'll do in duralinium that's the one yeah give that a shake uh 
Oh, that's interesting. Keith's just let me know actually that the um, newer version to this has ball bearings in them, whereas mine don't. I brought these um, as soon as they came out, which was a couple of years ago. Um, I'll have to have a look into the new ones. Um, so we've got uh, our paint here. Probably don't need to pour any out, actually. It doesn't take much. I could probably just dip off the, the lid. Right, but well, <clears throat> I'll just show you, you know, these are good for painting as well. So we could take this little panel here and we could sort of paint it in. Right, it's nice, thin and light. Right, and all we've got to do is just be neat. Right, let that dry a little bit uh, and whack on, say, another coat. Right, so all these little small things just adds a little bit of flavour. But it's not exactly, you know, because they're so small, it's not something you want to be going around masking up all these tiny little things on here, do you? So, you know, using the paintbrush, it's, not, it's just nice to know that we can use a paintbrush with these paints as well so just a little one there and just go around and dot them here and there i mean that's duralinium which is uh, a little bit dark i mean i've only put one coat on there but i have done uh duralinium just there on the underside because i was playing around and there's a whole bunch of duralinium once you put like a coat or two on there it does darken up uh, compared to our dull uh, but then you've also got to remember we're going to put a gloss coat on this eventually it just dry pretty quick so it could probably come back and finally throw on a second coat now you want to be careful that you don't overload like i just did a bit there your paintbrush too much all right because if it pulls up it sort of you want to make it a nice film Right, because the problem is with natural metal finishes is they are just not forgiving at all. Right, you, it, you can really tell brush strokes with natural metal finishes. So you've got to make sure your paint isn't overloaded and you just make it like a little film. Nice equal wherever you paint. There we go. You don't have to worry too much if, say, you've made a little bit of a mistake and maybe you've painted in, say, the recessed panel lines a little bit. Um, don't worry about touching them up because we're going to put a wash on here which goes into all these recessed panel lines and it'll cover it up anyway. It's just if you kind of go over somewhere else. Another thing I wanted to, to show you with all these little bits is it's like a weathering technique. All right, but maybe you want to add um, a little something. Um, so basically, it's, it's another way of doing it, really, of what we've just done here. Here, we've sprayed it on um, a natural metal finish. We've painted on a natural metal finish. But we could get out some oils, which uh, I've just got some nice, easy oil brushes here by Big um, Ammo. Bring you out a little bit. Right, getting out some blue, we can sort of give um, one of our panels a little blue tinge. All right, and we're just going to do maybe just the back of here. I think that's an air break. Um, and we want to get out some, blah, 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 where is it? Here we go, some odorless enamel thinners as well. And what we're going to do right, is we're just going to dot on. Now this, you need to make this really sort of thin. So I'm just dotting on a little bit of these oils, right? And I'm just gonna keep it in that panel line and sort of do the same sort of effect of that panel is just a slight bit different to the rest. And the other thing is because this is, um, because we've sprayed on acrylic based <coughs> paints, right? Our enamel based paints will be like oil to water and hopefully, I mean this is live, fingers crossed, we shouldn't end up smudging our natural metal finish. 
although saying that I'm live now so this is probably going to cock up but here we go so I'm just going to dab this on you want to sort of really sort of dab down those little spots right and as you see we want to sort of keep it within this panel itself and we want to sort of make sure it just gets we thin it down so much and we don't let it sort of pull up and blotch right we're just after this very very light change in the actual natural metal finish right, maybe bring it in a bit closer for you to see there we go I'm just just going to play around with that's this is a cool thing about enamels I mean if you don't like it guess what just rub it off right because we've got this thing going on where you know water-based acrylics is like all oil to water um, they don't really react right they kind of you know it's oil to water they sort of separate right so you know if we don't like it rub it off and it rubs off pretty easily and hopefully you can see there it just gives so that little panel like a little nice little tinge of blue i mean if you go too far and you let it sort of put too much of the oil down um, it can be a bit in your face but these just light little there you go there's a little bit of blue it gives it a slight little kind of difference to it and it's it's a, just another way of going about it all right, so I'll just put that down. Um, now, I'm just going to answer some last bit of questions and answers. Let's have a quick look. Um, I know this has already been answered, but someone's just asking again, just in case you come in late. Um, yes, these old ones that I've got doesn't come with the ball bearings. The newer ones, which apparently are the same, come with ball bearings. But if you don't, uh, if they don't, or you want to use it for pretty much anything, AK Interactive do do steel shakers, which is rather cool. You just get absolutely loads and loads in here. And I'll put them in all my paints that sort of I know that need them. So let's just zoom you out a little bit. Um, I'm just wondering. so what I'm going to do is off camera I will sort of do all these different techniques to sort of give different panels here and there um, which then basically does make this virtually ready for deckling um, now before I do the deckling um, just to speed things up for next week I will put on a quick gloss coat whichever which one you kind of prefer we've got alclads to lacquers um i'll show you to put gloss coats on in a, in a later video but um next week this will be all glossed up and ready for decklin and um, don't forget all your little bits as well just in here um you might want to go off maybe one of the wheelbarrow doors maybe spray one in them up like a different color duralinium um, matte aluminium whichever whichever one um, you want to do um, so that is is that um, I'm not seeing any more sort of questions and answers going on but yeah that is basically it for tonight sorry playing cameraman um, <coughs> but yeah um, uh, next week um, I, I am actually sort of still covering at the garage but I will be working sort of late tonight to get some videos uh, ready for next week and be editing them up in the morning and stuff. Uh, we've got some inbox reviews coming, um, the FA 18's coming along. Um, we've got competition going on this, this month as well. Uh, what's that for now? I think it was the M3 Lee we were giving away. Um, so if you, you, you haven't entered already, go to Genesis Models website. We've got in the competition section, uh, competitions February 2019. Just make a comment and you'll be entered for that. Um, uh, and on the news section as well, you'll see the, 
the the latest vlog and it shows you how to enter and all that stuff and you can watch the, that vlog on on the competition section just to let you know you know you guys can get in on that um if you don't know as well we've got a group build going on at the moment which is 172nd scale again dennis models um, um website in the forum section there's absolutely tons and tons of information going on in there and you'll find like the, as I say, the competition and the group build that's going on, or if you just want to build something, show off some pictures and throw it in there. We all love to see what everybody uh, is doing. So, yeah, until then, um, we'll be back again next week at the usual time of six o'clock. We'll be moving and carrying on with the MiG 15. Uh, I'll just have a quick, quick look. Um, any last questions and answers, maybe? There we go. No, that is it from you guys. Just um, you know, saying goodbye and um, uh, thanks for the, the praise for the, the forum and stuff. I mean, you guys are a great bunch of guys over there at the forum. They don't bite there. They are quite very, very friendly as well. So, um, hopefully, to see you around and see you next week. So, until next time, my name is Bob Waldron, this is Genesis Models, and I hope you've enjoyed.